Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, senior cloud developer advocate. I'm still in a cast. The color is awesome. But at least now I can type with both hands, albeit slowly. Thank you, Caitlin McKinnon, for the eyeliner help. Let's get into this week's dev news. First up, earlier this week, we had our monthly Windows community stand-up discussion. And in it, the team discussed the always connected PC and what it means for developers, including lots of stuff on how the Windows on Windows abstraction layer was extended to support x86 apps and more. And if you're interested in Windows on, on ARM development, check this out, because it's there's a lot of stuff to, that, that it goes over, lots of questions answered. Next up, Data Privacy Day is January 28th. And to kick it off, the Windows team has introduced a new privacy tool that's shipping on the latest Windows Insider Windows 10 builds. This feature is called the Windows Diagnostic Data Viewer, and it'll be shipping in a future Windows 10 update. And the viewer basically shows off all the stuff about your machine that's sent to Microsoft for diagnostics and debugging. So alongside the Microsoft Privacy Dashboard, which is separate, you can make choices about what types of data you share, you can delete stuff, and it offers more transparency into what data is collected. And that's actually really cool. In AI news, there is a great walkthrough um, on the new custom vision services, which, has, um, which makes it possible for you to easily train a classifier uh, with your own data, export the models, and embed these custom classifiers directly in your apps, and run it offline in real time on iOS, Android, and many other edge services. If you remember that hot dog app on HPO Silicon Valley, you know, like, is this a hot dog, is this not a hot dog? Uh, you can basically do that, but it supports offline usage um, as well as iOS and Android. Also in AI news, on the latest episode of the AI show here on Channel 9 is the first episode in a series talking about data science virtual machines, or DSVM. Now, DSVM is a family of Azure virtual machine images, and it's on the Microsoft uh, Azure marketplace, specifically built for uh, machine learning, deep learning, and analytics. Next up, my friend and fellow CDA Shane Boyer has a great blog post about how he built a project using serverless, Cosmos DB, and Microsoft Teams to monitor Stack Overflow activity. The project is called Stack Over Azure, I love the name, and the post really highlights some of the inventive stuff devs can build using serverless and Cosmos DB. The code is on GitHub, so if you want to try your hand at something similar, fork it and, and go for it. Speaking of serverless and Cosmos DB, another CDA, our pal Jeremy Lickness, um, has a blog post about how he used Twitter analytics with serverless, Cosmos DB, and Logic Apps to get insight into click behavior from his Twitter account. Again, what I like about this post is that it highlights the power of Logic Apps. And I like it because it shows how easy it is to build like, useful personal projects that get stuff done. That's always great. Speaking of Jeremy, he also wrote a great blog post this week for the Visual Studio blog highlighting how to get started using Azure Storage with serverless.net apps. Um, I was shocked to see how easy it was to integrate Azure Storage into an app. And also, serverless is the new hotness. We're going to be talking so much more about that, but check out that post. Next up is a twofer. If you've ever wanted to use OpenSSH, curl, or tar commands from the command line or PowerShell in Windows 10, Without having to install third-party stuff, you will love this news. OpenSSH is now in beta as an optional add-on in the Fall Creators update. And tar and curl executables are now part of Windows 10 Insider builds 17.063 and later. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit how excited I am about having these tools first party in Windows. And I love that I can just use it in the command line and curl stuff. It's awesome. Uh, speaking of the command line, Michael S. Hansen, he wrote an awesome uh, script that uses PowerShell automation to create an Azure web app. It generates a certificate from the awesome Let's Encrypt uh, certificate authority, and then it binds the cert to the web app with a custom domain name, all in one step. So all the code and instructions are on GitHub. And I'd like to thank Michael for making it this much easier to deploy an HTTPS cert alongside your web app. Really great work, and, and I love it. And now it's time for my pick of the week. The Microsoft Garage, a place Brian and I visited last fall, just announced a new project coded by some garage interns last summer. The project is called Ink to Code, and it's basically a prototype builder that takes the old school action of doing like a, a rapid app prototype on the back of a napkin and like makes it possible to do it in Windows. And so the difference is that the sketch you draw with this app can instantly be translated into actual code elements in Visual Studio. So you can draw your app prototype and have some of those basic building blocks, you know, stuff like the, the, the login and, and you know, other stuff um, basically pre-assembled. Think about it as a prototype for prototypes. 
I love this, and what I really love is that it came from the interns. Um, there's a video uh, linked in, in this, so be sure to check that out because it, it's cool how this works. Well, that does it for me. I will see you next week. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button on the bottom of our channel for all of our content and turn on notifications to get alerted every time we upload great dev content. See you later.